this is AndyTube. In this video, I'm going to show you the attachment set for the Singer Model 301. Now, this attachment set does not include, by any means, all the attachments that were available for Model 301. And there's also a group of what's called special attachments for the Model 301. But this video is about the, I guess what I would call standard or included set of attachments that came with the machine. And uh, they came in this box uh, right here, real typical of Singer back in that day. Uh, before they went to the treasure chest style and the um, plastic boxes and cases and so forth. And it's a, a identified with the well-known Singer emblem up here, Singer sewing machine attachments, um, their famous red S on one end, and it identified for class 301 machines. Uh, made in the USA and the other end panel has a number which is a Singer part number 160623 for class 301 machines. Um, it's just made out of cardboard with a printed paper um, glued to it. Uh, this box is in pretty good shape. You can see something, something punctured it here and there's some cracks along the seams, but um, usually you'll see a lot of these boxes split open and uh, torn apart at the corners and in much worse shape. Now when I restore a machine like I did with the 301 Coco, when I sell that I try and include a complete set of the original attachments whenever I can. And um, that, that uh, helps the price, of course, uh, when I sell it, but it also gives the the buyer uh, a more original piece of equipment. And when I, I'm going to show all these attachments and just give a real brief description of what they do, and I'll show you close-up pictures of it. So while I put this box to the back there, uh, take a look at these uh, close-up pictures of the box. Okay, I'm going to start with this now. Now this was uh, considered an attachment. The formal name for it in the Singer Parts Guide is Arm Spool Pin Washer cloth and basically it's the spool pin washer for the top arm of the machine and it's made out of felt. Now there's only one of these and you may be thinking about uh, where's the washer for the bobbin winder spool pin and that was actually on the machine when it was packaged. So that's why there's not one in the box. I don't know why they put that one on the box and they didn't put this one up on the arm, but that's what this is. And it's commonly known as a felt washer or spool pin washer. Um, next was the screwdriver machine. Um, this was also could be called the large screwdriver and on some models of Singer that that's what they called it the large screwdriver and it's actually a very heavy gauge wire that's uh, stamped out here with screwdriver uh, blade on the end and it's welded together right here and this is called blackened and um, this would be like they call it machine because it would be used for the bigger screws uh, on the on the machine. You can take a look at that. Uh, 
The next item is a screwdriver hook tension. Now this would more commonly be called the tension screwdriver or the small screwdriver. And it's got this blackened steel hardened blade and uh, it's got the part number stamped in it and it's got some Anco USA and the handle is more uh, of a aluminum I believe and I'm not sure why they called it a screwdriver hook tension I'm not sure I don't know of anything on the hook that this would be used for but uh, that's what they called it and usually now it's just called the tension or small screwdriver you can take a look up close the next uh, piece here is a presser foot and this is called the binder slotted for various widths uh, more commonly called the multi-slotted binder. Now you can use a binder to apply unfolded bias binding up to 15 16 inch wides and there's actually a little uh, uh, measuring here and telling you where to to use it and you can use uh, commercial folded sizes one two three four and five which would be a quarter inch five sixteenths inch uh, three eighths seven sixteenth and half inch commercial bindings and you can use this to sew piped edges also now binders frequently came with the part here to to put your fabric in and then wrap uh, an, an outer kind of tunnel to put the binder in so that you could sew the binder to the fabric and this one has some guide post so you would have your fabric coming in here and you could put your binder through these posts to help guide it while you were sewing it and this is called the multi slotted binder because it has special slots to enter different sizes of binding that's what these um, slots down on the side for so if you were sewing um, you know just a 5 16th inch binding you could put it through this second slot and not feed it into the big slot and try and try and keep it all lined up perfectly um, it also has, um, uh, I forget what they call this part that sticks up there, but it, al it allows you when it's mounted to your presser bar to uh, make some adjustments about where the needle is going to sew on the binding. So that is a multi-slotted binder. And here's the picture. Next we have the edge stitcher. This also has the same kind of a tab on there to adjust where it lines up uh, um, for the needle hole where you would want to sew it. And this is used when you're going to do real accurate stitching on the extreme edge of a fabric like sewing lace together or um, you can use it for tucking you could sew two pieces of fabric together and and this would allow you to guide the fabric in and adjust how close or how far from that edge that you wanted to uh, have your seam, and you can you can sew uh, tucks with this.
Now this is the adjustable hammer. This is for sewing on a hem and uh, it actually has uh, varying widths from 3 16th inch to 5 16th inch wide hem. And there's a thumb screw on there that you loosen and you slide the guide. There's a little finger right there and there's uh, you know numbers on here uh, starting at one one and a half two up to eight and it lets you guide a fabric at how width uh, how wide of a hem you want to make and it is uh, adjustable for that these are all, all metal, by the way. All of these parts are all metal, all made by Singer in the United States. And they all have a part number stamped on them. You see the part numbers in the pictures I'm showing you. Well, well they're stamped on the uh, presser feet or attachment also. Here's a close-up picture of the uh, adjustable hammer. This is also a hammer, and it's called the Hammer Foot Flat Bottom, and it's made to sew a small hem um, on the edge of material, or you can use it to sew felled seams, uh, and you can use it to uh, run a hem and sew on lace at the same time. And it's got a little a little guide to roll the fabric and you could guide the lace in also if you were like edging a piece of fabric and putting on a piece of lace or trim at the same time and it makes a 564th inch hem that's that's it where the adjustable you could adjust it from uh, 3 sixteenths to 15 sixteenths this just sews that one size of hem This next piece is called the uh, Presser Foot for Gathering. And it's um, just got a hole in it and you see it's got this, it's one of the few presser feet that do not have a flat bottom. And you see how the, the front toe kind of curls up. And um, this is to gather fabric or, or uh, uh, like when you sew it will gather the fabric or, or shearing it's also called you just you attach it to the presser bar just like any other presser foot put your fabric under it lower it and you just sew how you normally would but because of the shape of it it will gather the fabric as you're sewing and there's nothing special about uh, the, the way you sew. You just sew normally. But what, um, how much the fabric gathers while you're sewing is regulated by the stitch length that you choose. So like your, your longest stitch will make a fuller gather. And a, a, a shorter stitch would make less of a gather. And uh, I, I tell you, a lot of people who are new to this machine and new to sewing, um, if the straight stitch foot is gone and they see this in the accessory box, they think this is for straight stitching and they'll put it on and wonder, what, what, what's the deal? Why is my fabric all crumpled up? <laughs> but that's what that foot was uh, engineered for, gathering and shearing. Next we have the famous, or should I say infamous, 
ruffler. Whew. There's so much you can do with this ruffler and it's kind of a complicated attachment. It's, it's just a big old giant presser foot uh, really and you can use this foot by the way also for gathering when you sew but its main design was to, to, to sew uh, ruffles and there's adjustments there's adjustments up here uh, you, you'll see um, 1, 6 and 12 up here and you, you set it like I just changed it from 1 to 6 and what that does is um, uh, how, how many ruffles that will sew in a distance like an inch and then this last little hole in the end with the star from what I could tell was when you wanted to use the foot for some of the other functions but you didn't want it to make a ruffle and there's some fine tuning adjustment also here and, and look at this I always wondered who designed this you see that kind of slotted pattern like the edge stitcher and then you've you've got um, uh, guides up here you can do uh, piped ruffles you can sew plates um, you can make the ruffle and you can attach it to a facing or uh, another layer of fabric all at the same time and let me put this back on uh, on the number one here make that adjustment and this part attaches to the mm, presser bar um, you know just like all the other feet but there's also a part here that goes around and onto the needle clamp and that's what activates all these mech mechanisms is when see if I can come over the top of the camera is when the needle bar is pushing this up and down you see this blade here is going to push the fabric in and make that ruffle as the needle bar comes up and then as the needle bar comes down it's going to pull the blade out so that you can get the needle in there and stitch. I'm going to see if I can hold it like this side. So that's that's the ruffling uh, blade right here. And your, your fabric would be going through here or your layers of fabric your two different items would be going through there and as the needle went up and down it's going to fold that fabric into the ruffle and let you stitch it and if I changed it to the number six it's going to have uh, I think a shorter Uh, shorter no, I just stroke. remembered it's not uh, ruffles per inch this 1 6 12 and star is uh, how many ruffles um, how many strokes of the needle bar to make a ruffle so when it's on one every time this uh, needle bar and the needle clamp would activate the mechanism it would move the blade and make a ruffle and when you set it to 6 or 12 there's a, a little div a cog like here so if I set it on 6 the needle bar has to go up and down 6 times before that cog comes so here this time it's going to move the blade 
and fold the fabric and make a ruffle one ruffle and then one two three four five and then on the sixth stroke it's going to make another and if you move it to 12 it's going to take six strokes or 12 strokes of the needle bar and then it will make one ruffle that's what those are for anyway it's quite quite the design and quite the um, um, operation here and there's two or three oil points on here even that's how complicated it is and a lot of people have never attempted it but people who practice with it a little bit I've seen them create some really really uh, unique items with ruffles and attaching it with a uh, facing and lace at the same time and then uh, piped ruffles quite quite interesting and even plates like for um, curtains and draperies take a look at that Okay, the second to last item that would have been included in the original attachment set were four bobbins. And these are, um, some people call them the class 301 bobbin, some people call them the featherweight bobbin. Because the 301 machine and the 221 featherweight and 222 featherweight uh, those machines take this bobbin and they're the only machine Singer made that I know of that use this bottom bobbin so it's not a class 15 it's not a class 66 um, we call it the featherweight or the 301 class and then you had your touch and sew and future and so forth so it's a, it's a unique bobbin it's readily available and uh, this is a modern one that I have. There's eight holes um, around the side of each bobbin. And on the modern ones, some of the manufacturers add a, uh, add a little uh, small ninth hole down here close to the uh, spindle opening so that when you th thread the bobbin on the winder you can bring the thread out right there and hold that thread while you're winding the bobbin where the original singer you just uh, put the thread out one, any one of the eight holes and you could do that with this one but they also make a little small hole for the thread when you wind the bobbin I, I kinda like that but uh, you would get four of these um, in this original attachment set. Okay, and then uh, take take a look at take a look at those. Okay, now there's. Uh, one more thing you would get with this attachment set, and, and I don't include that, but it came with uh, two packages of needles, and each package had three needles, so you got a total of six needles, and they were Catalog 2020, which is now more commonly known as the 15X1 needle, and, and that needle is just available worldwide, it's very common. Um, needle not hard to find at all but that would have been included with this um, attachment set part number one six zero six two three so I wanted to show that for people who are interested in the history of the machine and who are uh, more of a collector um, you can find uh, parts the these parts like this vintage on eBay and uh, Bonanza and uh, I don't know maybe Amazon I don't shop Amazon too much 
but they're available and you can find them. Uh, keep an eye out when you go to thrift shops and, and garage sales and places like that. So a lot of times the machine won't come with any of these. And uh, a lot of times there'll only be some and some are lost. And like the little tension screwdriver, the screwdrivers seem to get lost and uh, things like that. So that's why I wanted to show it and show you the part numbers so that if you said, uh, you know, I, I'm missing this foot or I want this foot, it's part number so-and-so, you can a lot of times search, uh, search for it by the name and the part number and have some good luck with that. Now, I wonder how many of you are wondering what about the straight stitch uh, foot, presser foot, you know? Come on, Andy, you didn't, you didn't show that. And Singer called that, actually called that, the presser foot hinged complete. And it's not part of the attachment set because it came attached to the machine. When they shipped the machine from the factory, it had the straight stitch uh, presser foot on there. Kind of like how they put the uh, felt on the uh, bobbin winder spool pin. And I don't know if that's from, you know, testing. I know each machine was tested before it left the factory. So I'm thinking that's, they had the foot on there and they just left it on there and shipped it that way. So technically that is not part of the attachment set and it's not listed in their uh, parts manual as being part of the attachment set and when I asked this oops sorry the older singer guys that I know they said no it, w it wasn't part of the attachment set it was part of the machine it just came uh, right on the machine aha uh -huh. Okay, and like I said, now there are there are um, many more attachments Singer made that fit and work well on the 301. And there's a group of special, what they called special attachments that fit and work well on the 301. And I I, I may cover some of those in future videos, but my goal is to show you the original set and a brief explanation. And if you want uh, the, the instruction manual for the Model 301, um, the last one-third or half of the manual was instructions how to use all of these attachments. And, and uh, you know, good, good in instructions. And uh, if you're interested in these, you can take a look at, at your instruction manual. And if you don't have an instruction manual, uh, hang on right at the end of the video, and I'll put a slide up with uh, the, the web address where you can go still to Singer and download a free copy of the original instruction manual for Model 301. It's in PDF uh, format, and it's uh, it's nice. It's 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 good. You know, it's a good readable copy. So I will, I will um, give you that web address, and I, I'll put it in the description below the video. In the description, I can put the actual uh, web page, and you can click on it there and link out and go there. But it's it's not difficult to find. So I hope that was interesting to you, and I hope that you will come back and uh, visit me again on Andy Tube. And please take care. Uh, life is fragile. And uh, you never know what can come up. So take care of yourself.